Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take, of the models I've been painting for the games we cover here on the channel. I think there was only a week between the last two, I think it's two weeks for this one, but either way I have been pushing for this winter, the winter 2024 into 2025, to be the time where you do some damage to your pile of grey shame. Specifically, do a damage, that's what we're calling it. You will never defeat your pile of grey shame, it's just something you will have as a miniature collector but use this winter season as an excuse to stay out of the cold and just get stuff painted and or assembled, but painted especially. Anyway, we have a little bit of scenery to talk about, not much from Kill Team. We have some Fallout Waste on Warfare, we have some Hellboy, we have some Battletech, we have a couple of good doggles from Warhammer Underworld, and then we have some official and unofficial Crisis Protocol. So as usual, I'll go from left to right and we'll just talk about what's been happening. So from the new Kill Team Hive Storm box, I have an assortment of the special, or universal equipment, sorry, that's what it's called. These are three different types of barriers from the universal equipment. Talk about these real quick, won't take long. Have a bit more to say about some of the scenery I've done. Uh, I was using a YouTube tutorial, so I'll definitely talk about that. And I just did some of the smaller pieces as a test run, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Not 100% copied, but I'll obviously make direct comparisons to the uh, video I use. But very quickly, these are three different types of uh, barrier. Uh, these are portable ones, these are deployable ones, and these are heavy ones, and they're universal equipment now. And I spray painted all of them silver, and then just gave them a dry brushing of dry rust by Army Painter. And for these ones, it didn't feel like there needed to be anything else done. I'm just going to put these to one side. Same with the, these are the deployable ones. They actually are pretty cool looking, because you can tell that they deploy if you look at the back here, like you can tell that these are the, the gears and it slots in together. It's a shame this, the thing itself it doesn't do that, but you can tell that's how it would operate on the battlefield, so it's pretty cool. Didn't do anything special with this again, there's nothing really to pick out, so there wasn't anything to do with them really. These last two though, the heavy barricades, they've got like battle damage in them here. I put some Agros Earth Shade in this hole here. They've got some sandbags that I used Agros Earth Shade, eh, Agros Dunes, sorry for and some rattling grain for some dirt build up. There's also some skulls and I use skeletal horde for them. We can zoom in here a little bit I suppose to show off these ones since they're a bit more unique looking than just some bog standard rusty barricades. But yeah, simple, very quick, did not take long at all. This one's also got a sandbag and then on the inside it's got a little note thing that I kind of had fun with picking out like it looks like inquisitorial orders or something and another little skull in the corner there. So, not much to say about those, but have done them, and I didn't want to do another mini scenery special since I'm only really doing Kill Team scenery right now. And that is a convenient segue into talking about this scenery, which, as I say, is also from the same Kill Team starter box, the Hive Storm one, and I used the guide that I found online as much as I could. I didn't have all the same paints he had. However, if you want to check it out for yourself, it is by a YouTube channel called War Hipster, I believe. They have a series called Contrast Plus where they do especially good paint jobs using contrast paint as a base. Like if you consider my stuff amateur level, it's definitely like multiple steps above. If you have a steady hand, eye for detail and more patience than I do, that's definitely a series to check out because he brings out the absolute best of contrast paint for sure. That's kind of just tangential because contrast paint doesn't have as big a, a process here. But he did a video called Painting the Kill Team Hive Storm Terrain in Six Hours or Less. It's something like that. I'll link the actual video in the description. And he missed out some stuff that I've decided to pick out because I, I'm not limited. I'm not setting myself a time limit. But I definitely took some inspiration from the colours he used. And then just went in my own direction, as I say, because I didn't have the colours he used or because I felt like I wanted to do something a little different, but definitely used his. I'm not claiming this is my technique or anything like that, so I want to make that 100% clear. So we have this terrain. There's some bigger parts that are going to be more of a challenge. And to start with, I did what he did, which was spray painting them in Chaos Black. Any black spray paint will do, really, as long as it's, it can be built upon. Then he used a first dry brush coating quite heavily of a dry brush colour that I hadn't experimented with before and I think it's called Dry Stone. I might be incorrect, I'll put it on screen right now if I am. 
It was one I hadn't used before, but I was so impressed with just the effect of that one dry brush, I went out of my way to buy it. I didn't have it before that, and as he says in his video where he painted up this terrain, if you want it to be really quick, just black and then a dry brushing of that very heavily looked good enough, and it did, it looked good. You can build on it, as I did and he did in his own way, but that just on its own creates such a great looking effect. <laughs> I really, really liked it. So yeah, that, that dry brush, technique, uh, technical paint, really good. On top of that, uh, I believe he then used a dry brushing of Gracier, which is the base coat I use for all the models I paint. I did the same thing, trying to stay slightly higher up, like you're doing everything with the first layer, second layer, try and stay a bit more to the edges and the tops and just the details. And then he used a different paint for his third dry brushing. I didn't have the one he used, so I used Ulthwin Grey instead. It creates basically the same effect. I forgot, no, I think he used Screaming Skull. I think it was Screaming Skull. And many years ago I had Screaming Skull, but did not anymore. So the next step he did, and I'll just go through the train as I'm talking about it, was he used Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint and just picked out some details like the, the window rims there around the fan, exhaust fumes, and these kind of platform sections here. And he stuck with the theme across all parts. I decided I liked how that looked, so I did the same thing. I have that contrast paint, so why not? Did that. And then for the pipes and, and stuff, he used, I think he used Wildwood. And I think my dog is about to bark, so I'm gonna do a quick break here. Okay, she didn't bark, but she was really, really tempted. I can tell, I know my dog. So as I was saying, he used Wildwood for, to pick out the pipes and stuff. I didn't really like how that looked. So I used Citadel Bronze Paint, a Bronze Scorpion, I think it's called, knowing that it would get a little bit of a, a dry brush later. Uh, I think the dry brush I used was a very tiny amount of Necrom Compound. I hope I'm remembering that correctly because I can see the sort of silverish that looks like Necron Compound to me right there. So I think that's what I used on top of it to give it that aged bronze look because otherwise it's, it doesn't look super great. But you can just use Wildwood. This is a rare occurrence of me seeing a contrast paint be used and be like, actually I'm going to use a bronze paint and then just dry brush it again because I feel like that looked better. It takes longer, which wasn't the point of his video, just to be clear he was going for speed. So I did a different technique because I, I had the time and I picked out like the communication things, the fans, the exhaust fans, wires, etc. I just did that as, again, just to add a bit more detail to it. On that note, for these kind of sections, he didn't take the time to pick out the shell casings or the rivets or like there's some tech down there. So again, I had, a little, I had as much time as I wanted. So I decided to just, on top of the base coat that was already there, so the multiple dry brushed, <laughs> was starting with the base of black, I just put contrast paint over them, so like that's Nazrag Yellow and the Imperial Sigil there, or the Aquila rather, that is Militarno, no, that is Mantis Warrior Green on the ammo box, uh, and the more you look at this, the less it makes sense, because this is a thick grating, and yet there's an ammo box lodged within it somehow, but that's on Citadel, not me, so, you know, and then for this one, again, I use a bit of the bronze there, a bit there as well, and a, a, there was an additional dry brush on top of the red, and I'm forgetting what it is, but it was whatever he used. So again, I'll be linking his video since he's the one who uh, thought up the method. I'm really happy with the results and I will be doing the rest of the train like this as well. So that's one really big building, two quite big buildings, and then a couple of small ones. And then I think there's a few more uh, like little scatter trains. But I just, I picked out those because I wanted to do a fairly large test. Really happy with the results and yeah, I'll definitely link that video for you to take a look at. So with that little conversation out of the way, let's actually talk about the models I've been trying to paint. Starting with some Wasteland Warfare. This is the Capital Companions box, I think it was called, which gives you Booch, Charon, or Ka Karen. See the Karen of the Wasteland? And I've forgotten the Super Mutant's name, unfortunately, um, from Fallout 3. I haven't played Fallout 3 in a long time because the PC port of that game is horrific and I don't have a 360 anymore. That's besides the point. So, planning ahead for future content on Wasteland Warfare. I painted Butch just as I, as I, the, well, I felt the official paint job was. So that's Black Legion for his leather jacket. It is Talisar blue, sorry, no, Frostheart blue for his vault trousers. A little bit of Mantis Warrior green on his Pip-Boy. And I used the same green for this, the Tunnel Snakes rule <laughs> logo on his back. He wasn't who I was specifically wanting this box for. Um, he, he just, 
you know, he kind of just looks like a, a vault dweller but maybe turned to a raider faction, which does have a, a fitting purpose for the storyline I've created for my Wasteland Warfare series. What I really wanted was these two. And I have specifically painted the Super Mutant. I've forgotten his name. It's going to drive me nuts. It's the one that meets you when you escape the Enclave. But either way, I specifically did not paint him with his kind of pallid yellow skin that he has in Fallout 3 for my own purposes for the series. And I don't want to go into any more detail than that. So I just used Ghoulam and Flesh, basically. Uh, Frostheart for the Voltaic jumpsuit he's wearing. Lead Belcher Silver and Black Legion for his boots. So, not much to say about him. Really not much I want to say about Charon either. Beyond, I basically tried to copy the official paint job, so it's a mixture of Rattling Grime and Black Legion with some Snake Bite Leather for the shotgun. The only thing I did different was some silver showing through his skull rather than flesh. And that is for reasons I will leave you to guess. Put a little bit of Blood for the Blood God on the knife he's holding, splattered it on the floor as well. And he's got some sandbags there, that's Agros Dunes. And other than that, it is Basilicanum Grey for the grey parts, Snake Bite Leather for the wasteland parts. So, I, I usually have more to say, but because I'm trying to keep strum about plans I have for the series and anything going forwards, I, I can't. So, they're, they're just there to say, hey look, I painted them, and there is a reason. And speaking of just having things that I painted here to document that, hey, they have been painted, here's three more. <laughs> Frog monster demon thingies from Hellboy the board game. These ones are in the stereotypical zombie pose, dragging a leg behind them and have their hands up. And also that pose is awkward for the camera and what, not knowing where to apply the focus to. So it might be a little awkward. Unlike the other ones I've shown off so far, these ones actually have most of their clothes still on. So there is that. I used wild, no, I used um, Garagag Sur, whatever it's called, for their shirts and Ultramarines Blue for their jeans, snake bite leather for their belts, and again, Mantis Warrior green for their eyes, with a little bit of Iron Jaws yellow to pick out their eyes. Did I say eyes twice there? I meant skin is Mantis Warrior green. It's one of those days. So again, not much to say about that, other than three more of the spawn pool thingies that I showed off, I think that's it, in terms of everything frog related painted in that box, so hopefully, in theory, that should be enough to play the game now. I'm still not 100% because I haven't started trying to learn it. But it's been certainly an experience painting various frog demons in poses. I'm quite sick of it now, so I'm glad it's more or less over besides the spawn po pools of like the tadpole thingies. But again, just as a matter of note, there's three more done. And next we have a trebuchet and a Zeus for Battletech Alpha Strike painted in House Korea slash Draconis Combine colours and they've already been in the Return to Battletech Alpha Strike that's been on the channel. I think everybody will have seen it by now, not just channel members. So again, this is kind of just, hey, these are here as a matter of note, I've painted them up. In the House Karita colours, which I have been talking about the last couple of times that they've been in this series. Again, just to provide another faction for the table, basically. So other than showing off that this is how I particularly painted them, I talked about the colours previously. It's nothing fancy, which is also partially why I picked this kind of House Karita colour scheme because it, it's quick. It's quicker to do than like uh, my Mercenary Band colours which take a little bit longer. And it looks fine. And it, it creates a nice dichotomy of like red versus blue if I ever put my Mercenary Band up against them. So it's, it's at a glance you can easily tell, oh that's one team and oh that's another one. And in general I just wanted an excuse to paint another trebuchet and a Zeus because I kind of like both of them. So that is that done. And I still have a couple of repeat mechs, I'm not sure who. I've, right now I've got a base coated Stalker and a another Longbow. I have a third Longbow, thanks to some that my friend gifted to me. Uh, I think I'm going to do the Stalker in House Korea style. The Longbow, I've already done one for them. I've already done one for my Mercenary Band, so I don't need one. So I'm not sure who else I'm going to do one like, because it wouldn't be a clan. So I'm not sure. Um, I haven't decided yet. So you might see a, a third painted longbow in the next one of these, we'll see. And we're nearing the end here, we have two good boys from Warhammer Underworld, specifically this is from Hexbane's Hunters, which is the next warband for Underworlds from my backlog that I've decided to paint. And I started with the two doggos because, hey, they're two little doggos and they'll be super quick, especially this one. I used Black Templar for this one, I think, or Black Legion, whichever one is the very thick black, which is also going to be relevant when we talk about uh, the next model. 
but that's just to because I knew it created a very nice kind of almost panther look which is what I used it for on the panther on Black Panther's base I thought yeah this this is basically a Labrador or something mixed so I used it for that super quick snake bite leather for the collar silicone grey boom done super quick there's three no four humans in this warband I think to go with the two dogs Hexbane himself there's a big guy with an axe a crossbow person and then a lady with pistols I think and uh, Warhammer Underworlds will be continuing on the channel but the current iteration or the previous iteration by the time you hear this possibly not the new version which is just horribly cheap and rubbish almost swore there cheap and rubbish looking and is just obviously it's their last desperate effort to try and not cancel it they must not be making enough money for them but to get rid of all art because they don't want to pay artists to get rid of all uniqueness to the warbands by making generic decks that warbands draw from instead is lazy and would require less work so no we'll, uh, War, Warhammer Underworlds will still be on the channel now and then it was never popular so it's not like anyone's going to miss it if it vanished but I still want to play it I still like the previous edition a great deal I wish it had been more successful because it's really really good and still got a few more warbands I want to bring to the table and try out so these doggos are just a, the the first step in bringing another one to this. I guess I should be talking about the paints I use. Agro's Dunes for this one with a little bit of rattling grime for the the muzzle area because that's just how it looked in the official paint job and that was Black Legion, uh, maybe Templar, no it was Legion for the straps of his harness and some lead belcher silver as well with non-oil over the top. So you might see some humans from that particular warband next time. So now we have an official release for Marvel Crisis Protocol that's been in a battle report and an unofficial release that's been in a Marvel Crisis Protocol battle report. Two different videos, not the same one. So we have Black Panther Chosen a Bast, which was an exercise in frustration for me having to deal with like trying to make his armor look a little bit purple while also trying to blend his cape and the panther uh, next to him and make it all look different. I like how I managed to pick out the panther's eyes. I got really lucky with that, like you can kind of see it there. So. This is a mixture, <clears throat> mixture of Black Legion and Black Templar contrast paints. The really thick one is the one I use for his cape and the panther. The other one is the one I use for his suit. Over which I did Magus Purple, which didn't really get picked out. So I used Luxian Purple. No, the older one. Shilish Purple, that's usually pretty bad. Just to pick out a, just a little hint of purple glow. And I, I think it's... I, I feel like it's getting picked up by the camera. It's... it's more subtle than the official paint job is and I don't really know how to get that effect so I did what I could. Nasdrag yellow for his bangles and claws and belts and such and for his base and he has a really nice like unique base. Silicanum grey, agros dunes, striking scorpion and non-oil where relevant essentially. So yeah pretty neat. I, I'm okay with the eyes on Black Panther although one of them's a little kind of squinting but the ones on the panther itself, it's like I, as soon as I did them, I was like, I can never touch this again because I'll never, I will only make it worse if I try and make them better in any way. I got real lucky there. So yeah, very cool miniature. Only a three threat miniature, and I, I hope because I remember his his release number was quite high. They are going to reach the point now where they're doing just unique bases for everything because it makes the models feel so much better. On that subject, the unofficial model I have here came with a unique thing to bung on the base and it gives it so much more character such that Thor here who is just a 3d printed a third party model I stuck on an official base that I had spare and it's partially because it's a 3d printed non-official model that I think I did a decent job with it because I wasn't scared of messing up I know that's weird but because because it isn't an official model it's like well if I mess it up whatever it costs less than 10 pounds so <clears throat> I went very experimental with the lighting. It looks like a late 90s, early 2000s movie poster with the blue against the yellow. But that is because this version of Thor is standing atop Surtur's mask from Ragnarok. A little mis-sized, but whatever. It's very dramatic and cool looking. So that gave me the chance to do a little bit of like lingering burning and fire effect. Whereas obviously he's calling down the lightning. And I wanted to do a little bit of that. I feel like I did it better on Better Ray Bill, which we talked about ages ago. But this one turned out okay. And I, as I say, the, the part I like the best is the juxtaposition between the two lighting styles that you get from kind of like that angle. 
which is really neat. And this is my stand-in model for Thor 2, as people call it, the the hero of Midgard, or champion of Midgard, whatever it's called. The one that was in the new Force set with Thor, Sif, um, Mighty Thor, and the new Loki. Because the Thor model that comes in that box is not in a great pose. The more you look at it, the worse it is. He's holding his hammer in a manner which makes no sense. This version, it makes complete sense. He's about to bring the hammer down and smack somebody or shoot somebody with lightning. You can also get an alternative version of this one where it's kind of like spinning. So if you want it to look like he's actually going to launch it rather than zap someone, that is an option. But I like this better because I wanted to do weird stuff with the lightning. So that's why I got that version. And I, what I like about this is if this was like, if this was Captain America or something, he would be missized for Crisis Protocol. He's too large. In fact, if we just compare him to T'Challa here, you can see like Thor is large compared to him. But the thing I don't like about any of the Asgardian sculpts officially for Crisis Protocol is they never remember that Asgardians are really, really tall. The one, like the picture I'm thinking of specifically is from Secret Invasion, I think, when Thor and Captain America kind of stare each other down. They both thought each other were dead and it's the first time we've seen each other in ages. And Thor has like a good, at least one foot, maybe two foot on Cap, who's tall enough as is. As Guardians are tall. And this model reflects how chunky Thor actually is. So that's what I really like about this sculpt as well. The original Thor model for Crisis Protocol, it's fairly large, but this one I think is the perfect encapsulation of how large Thor is actually meant to be. And it's an unofficial model. And it's in a fantastic pose with so much character. <laughs> and I'm happy with the paint job I did. So, and I should talk about the colors, I guess. Ultramarine blue for the darker parts of his suit, lead belt are silver, um, uh, iron jaws yellow for his hair and like the belt buckle and stuff, bal red for his cape, it's a mixture of Magmadroth flame and Yandin yellow for the flame effects, frost heart, uh, ultramarine's blue, talisar blue and then I used a normal citadel paint which I think was Kalgar blue or um, Kantos, is that the one it's called, is it the sky blue normal citadel paint to try and do a little bit of highlighting on top. And is it perfect? No. As I say, I feel like I did a better job on Better Rebuild for the lightning looking like it's reflecting. But the overall composition, I'm really happy with. And I used that same Citadel paint to highlight the stone, which was just Basilicanum Grey. So this is my, this is probably my favorite model I've painted for quite some time. And I think, as I was saying, a large part of that is because I took chances with it because it's not an official model, so if I mess up, uh, I can always just get another one for less than a tenner. And it was a really high quality sculpt, the two, a really high quality uh, print, I mean. So yeah, it's great. I think it's on Etsy and eBay, I can't remember which one I particularly bought it from, I think it was eBay. But yeah, the, like the poses you can get some unofficial miniatures in, really great. Yeah, but outside of some terrain, which I think turned out okay, this is definitely the thing where I'm like, yeah, this actually turned out decent. Usually I'm overly skeptical of the quality of my paint jobs, but I like how that one turned out. So I'm glad I did it, glad I picked it up. And also he's an absolute monster on the table. He is scary, he is gonna be nerfed into the ground. And that is it. I managed to blather for way too long about way too little once again, which is just why I kinda like doing these painting updates. But the other reason is the call to action. Make this winter the winter of discontent for your pile of grey shame. Look at it lording over you or laughing at you. You can do it damage so easily, you just need to crack out some paint. It doesn't even need to be a huge, ridiculously complicated miniature. Just batch paint some stuff, look at the grey shame, see what's the easiest and get started. Like, th that's the first step is the hardest part. Do it a damage. And, if you want to show me what you've been painting, feel free to do so on Blue Sky, which is linked in the description box below as well. Or you can check out my Discord. If you need a link to it, just swing by when I'm streaming on Twitch or YouTube and let me know. I, I stream from my gaming channel, not the tabletop channel. But either way, next time you will hopefully be seeing, as I say, more of Hexbane's Hunters, perhaps some more mechs from Battletech. I'm hoping to get Angel and Archangel done for Crisis Protocol and more scenery if I decide to even show that off. I'm, I might. I, I'm not sure if I need to know that I've showed you the technique that I'm going to use for all of it. There might be some Wasteland Warfare, and I do have some more He-Man uh, Battlegrounds to do, but we'll see. I'm, I'm just, I'm doing as much as possible. I, I want to get a lot done this Christmas. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me ramble. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and see you in about two weeks for another update. Until then, ta-ta for now.